Good morning. Welcome to New Life Church this morning. This is May the 24th and we're in our morning worship service and we're going to read from a passage in the Second Chronicles. It's in the Old Testament. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 and God's word says this to us this morning. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. A very important part of scripture. In fact, we read it last week and you might wonder why we're reading it again this week, but we'll, in a few minutes, we'll be giving a, a short message based on, on this passage of scripture. But I wonder if you know it's 80 years since the events of Dunkirk and Operation, they call it Operation Dynamo, 80 years ago, over 300,000 servicemen were rescued from the beaches of Dunkirk. And we're going to show part of the service this morning, we're going to show a short video, video entitled The Miracle of Dunkirk. And it really ties in with the message this morning that we have found in Second Chronicles. And if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal the land. And although this was written to Solomon in, in the Old Testament and with the dealings of Israel, the principles, I believe, and instructions we find in this passage, I really believe it can be applied personally to our lives if we humble ourselves before the Lord, if we humble ourselves and say, Lord, what you say is important. These principles can be apply to our own very lives and not only can they apply to our own lives but I believe nationally that we can apply these principles if God's people were to seek him if we were to pray seek his face turn from our wicked ways then God will hear and God will deliver us oh how our nation needs God will we have I assess that our situation is critical. But oh, how we need the Lord in our country today. When you look around and you see some of the things that are happening, oh, we need a, a touch from God. We need a renewal in the things of God. And we need to be revived in a relationship with him. And so if you look at the life of Solomon, this obviously was at the rebuilding of the temple. But if you look further down his life, you will see that in First Kings, Second Chronicles, it's recorded that King Solomon's heart was not loyal to the Lord. It records that his his heart became cold towards him. A man who was the wisest man in in the one of the wisest men, if not the wisest men in the Old Testament, and. He wrote amazing proverbs and psalms. He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And in the early days, Solomon, because he cried out to God and he asked God for help, God gave him amazing wisdom. In fact, he got dreams, at least two dreams, from the very hand of God and instructed in his life. And so in his early days, Solomon followed the Lord with all his heart. But it's not the case that towards the end of his life, he wandered from God. His heart was not loyal. In fact, scripture records he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And so his heart wandered from God and he had other attractions in his life, other things that took him away from him, his relationship with God. And it says that his heart had other attractions. And so you can read about it in, in the Kings and in the Chronicles. And there formed a demise that the, the end of Solomon's life 
was not as great as the beginning. And the demise of the state of Israel, the nation of Israel, started with Solomon wandering from God. If you see the study of the history of the kings of Judah and the kings of Israel, it shows us a very interesting picture. And I believe we can take the principles of these, these accounts onto our situation today. And another king that started very well, Solomon started well, but he didn't finish well. And it's a warning for us that, oh, that we might finish well in the things of God, that we might humble ourselves and follow him. Another king who started well was the king of Hezekiah. In 2 Kings chapter 18, it says he trusted in the Lord God of Israel, for he held fast to the Lord. He did not depart from following him. The Lord was with him and he prospered wherever he went. And as long as King Hezekiah followed the Lord, he prospered. In fact, you can read the story and, and it says that Hezekiah did what was right in the sight of the Lord. In fact, he's responsible for leading and in the things, in I would say a revival in the things of God. He One of the first things King Hezekiah did was he opened the temple, the, the doors of the temple, and he repaired them. He restored worship in God's temple. He restored Passover and then towards in the nation of Israel. He lit the lamps. He was responsible for allowing the lamps within the temple to be relit. And he began to burn incense in the temp in the holy place. And he began to offer the offerings that God had required. And so you see a picture of light comes in. The lights are, are, are relit in the temple. Revelation and light, lightness in the house of God, revelation and incense is, is burnt. A, a, a symbol of prayer is reinstituted in the life of the temple. And I love the, the illustration that he opened the door of the temple and repaired the door. And a, a new work of renewal and revival was happening within the nation of Israel. He witnessed one, one of the other things he witnessed. He witnessed an incredible deliverance of the name, one of the greatest deliverances in the history of Israel. When Jerusalem was surrounded by the Assyrian army, the king together, you can read about it in Second Kings chapter 19, or Second Chronicles chapter 32, the king together with Isaiah sought the Lord and they prayed together and God intervened and delivered the nation, the city of Israel, city of Jerusalem from the Syrian army. It was an incredible intervention of, of God as Isaiah and the king both prayed. And Isaiah later wrote and he said this, in Isaiah 57, 15, he said, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who is a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. And there you see that if we are humble, if we humble ourselves before God, he can revive us, he can renew us, he can renew us, he can refresh us in the wonderful things of God. In his latter years, Hezekiah got severely sick and was near death, 2 Kings 30, 20. Isaiah the prophet went to him and told him, imagine the prophet coming to you and saying, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. What a word from God. And Hezekiah's response, what way was, when he, was he going to respond? Hezekiah's response was that he humbled himself and he turned his face to the wall and he wept bitterly. He turned to seek God's mercy and 
grace and forgiveness. And he turned from his, the pride of his heart and asked, he humbled himself and asked for God's assistance in hell. Before Isaiah had left his very palace, God spoke to him and said, go back. Go back and speak again to Hezekiah. So Isaiah went back and he shared this. He said to him, I have heard your prayer. God's response was immediate. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. I will add 15 years to your days. I will deliver this city from the Assyrians. So because of Hezekiah's amazing response, he humbled himself. God poured out his grace and his mercy. And he extended Hezekiah's life by 15 years. I think that's an incredible account. Hezekiah humbled himself and cried. He had tears. He wept bitterly and asked for God's mercy. Oh, how in our need, um, in our affliction, in our crisis, in our sickness, that we might call on God's help. And align ourselves with this amazing promise in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive the sin and heal the land. Oh, that we might have an opportunity at this, in this particular crisis that we're going through nationally, that God is is giving us an opportunity that we might call on him and humble ourselves before him and that he might turn and have mercy on us and forgive us. And oh, what an example, the miracle of Dunkirk. I trust you watch this and see um, what the King George VI instructed and encouraged the people of Great Britain. And you will see the queues of people getting into church to pray. The millions of people turned out to seek God and to ask for God's deliverance. Oh, how we might do that as a nation today and that we might be revived in the things of God and see a move of the Spirit of God. Oh, that we might humble ourselves, pray and seek his face, turn from our wicked ways, and God will hear from him and will touch us and heal us. Amen.